I've got to start by saying thanks to the team, not my team, but our team. We wouldn't be here today without the work of all of our staff, because without them, we wouldn't be delivering all the stuff that we deliver. And first on my list when I wrote my speech, or did my mind map, should I say, um, was my staff, our staff. So can they all stand up for me? Go on. This is from me and from the trustees, but thank you from us for everything that you've done during this most weird time. It's been fantastic to work with you all as your chief exec, but it's not about me, it's about everything you guys do. So I know I keep saying it, but without any of you, whether it be David running the administration for Beckenham from home because he's self-isolating because of COVID right the way through to, who else can I pick on that's caught my eye? Sharon developing into the lived experience lead at Beckenham through to, where is she? Where's Karen? I can't see you. Um, through to Karen as being the administrator into um, the support work and now into a therapist at uh, Dudley. You know, Kerry, Kerry sorry. <laughs> told you um it's it's been a fantastic journey for us all and thank you so quick round of applause for everyone really and and i'm not missing any names out but i'm just picking on a couple of people and sorry karen kerry for getting the names mixed up but that's my dyslexia so um i've got to also you can sit down now if you want <laughs> Um, and you usually do this at the end, but I'm not conventional. So I've got to say thank you to the team for organising today as well. I know that we're at the beginning of the day um, and it's all about celebrating. So let's celebrate them for pulling off today in the most difficult of circumstances and the most grumpiest of CEOs at times. Um, so well done to Hannah and Chloe and Sarah and all the other people that have been involved along the way um, of pulling off today getting everyone here in the first place, finding the place, the food, the seats, everything else. So well done from me, but I'm sure from everybody else in the room as well. So thank you for pulling it off for us. Um, I also have to say thanks to our friends. Uh, this event was really designed for ex-residents and staff and ex-staff to come and say hello to each other and, and get to know one another again. Um, it's one of the things which we've always wanted to do is to have a bigger connection to ex-residents than we have. And I know some staff and ex-residents do um, keep in contact with each other, but this is all about developing those relationships. We would be nothing as an organisation without our alumni. So thank you for um, our friends who are also here. So the likes of the guys from Wise Up, from Epic, from Green Pen, from Q Homes, from... Um, clarity from everywhere else that come and help us uh, our art therapists the video guys um, that you've been doing upstairs everybody else thank you um, thank you to our funders as well some of whom are in the room uh, but it wasn't really about funders this it was more about a celebration of bringing our people together but thank you to our funders because we wouldn't be an organization without the funds that we receive um, thank you to the speakers who are speaking I'm not going to reel off the names because you're going to get to see them up here. Um, and then finally, I have to say thank you to our board. And I know there are a couple of board members here today, but I have to say thank you to all of them for having the confidence in us as an organisation to grow and achieve what we are achieving. Because this organisation today would be nothing without when it was born 50 years ago. But also this organisation is completely different today than it was 18 months when I arrived. We've been on an immense journey over the last 18 months, as we have over the last 50 years. And without the support and the confidence and the, the interrogation that we get from the board in the most positive sense of the word, uh, we wouldn't be here today. So thank you to my board of trustees um, for having the confidence in us. Um, so that's the top section on my speech done now. Um, so about today, as Chloe's already said, it's, it's a day to celebrate, really. It's a day to celebrate the fact that 
as a charity, we've been here for 50 years in a sector which is a weird one. You know, I've, I'm new to the sector, I'm 18 months in, and it very much feels like a sector which is still evolving. It felt, still feels very fresh, very new. Um, and we still feel very fresh and very new as an organisation. But I think we have to celebrate the fact that we have stood the test of time in this weird addiction which is hidden from everybody that nobody really knows about until, unfortunately, it all comes crashing around you. And I know I've just had some nodding heads around the room there. Um, I was talking to one chap before who said, you know, it only ever really came to the fore when his wife found a bank statement. I'm not going to pick on who that person is because you've all got very similar stories for those of you who are in recovery or living life post uh, addiction. That hidden addiction has been really, really difficult to deal with. And we've been the hidden charity within that hidden addiction. No one's really known about us. The chap I was talking to managed to find Gambling Anonymous. Didn't find us at the time, which was nine years ago. So hopefully now, with more of our digital stuff going on, more of our awareness stuff going on, people can find us. It's really a data connect as well. You know, there's lots of new faces on our team from Gordon Moody, because we're growing. So our partners, our ex-residents, and our new faces can all get to meet each other. It's one of the reasons why we've not done name badges. So that you can actually just walk up to anybody and say, hi, I'm Matthew. Who are you? To break down those barriers, because it's all about connecting and meeting and chatting. Um, so it's all about making new friends. There's a challenge for you, try and make me a friend. <laughs> um, but I also want it's a day of reflection, a day of reflection on those that we have helped. There's a plethora of more people out there that we've helped who aren't in this room today, who could be here today. And they wouldn't be in the positions that they are today without the support that they had from us as, a Gordon, as Gordon Moody. But I also want to spend a little bit of time thinking about those who haven't been able to find us, who haven't been able to cope and deal with their addiction because we've been hidden. Because that's the real challenge for us as an organisation, is to really grow. It's to reach those people that really need us. Working with our partners, working with you as our ex-residents, um, working with the wider fraternity out there, or sorority, whichever way you want to define it, um, to really make that difference so that more people can access our services. That's what it's about for me, is creating an organisation that has got the right channels, the right facilities, so that we can treat those that need us most. I'll come on to a little bit more about that um, as we go on. So there's part two of my speech. Um, our organisation then, it's growing. We had a little session yesterday afternoon in our new offices, which um, is a weird thing to say from an organisation that previously has had offices, then we had offices in the services and then we didn't have an office. We now have a, a proper office, which thanks to the team for finding that. Um, they know who they are. But we are growing rapidly. Um, thank you to the help, for, or th with thanks to the help from our funders, We've grown this year exponentially. When I started, we were, what, 1.4 million, Rob? By the time we finish this year, we're going to be, where's Colette and Sue? About 4 million, you reckon? About there? Which is substantial growth. But it's not about the money. The money just reflects that we've got the capacity to treat more people. So our capacity to move on from only treating nine people in Beckenham and nine people in Dudley is moving on exponentially because that's not enough. There are more people out there who are hiding their addiction, who are in crisis, who unfortunately are going to commit suicide because of their situation that we need to get to. And we'll only do that through our partners, we'll only do that through our staff and we'll only do that through working with our networks. Um, we're also an organisation that's doing a lot better. When I arrived, we were doing some brilliant stuff in the services and we carry on doing some brilliant stuff. But I'm sure my team will all agree that we needed to pull our socks up in certain areas. 
been able to communicate the difference that we make, the impact that we make. We've done a lot of work on that over this last 18 months. The work that Rob and Amy, for example, have been doing on actually being able to say, we're making a difference here. And actually, we need to make more of a difference. And actually, more importantly, we need to be treating more people. So with our growth comes the evidence that we do need to grow. Because without that evidence that we do need to grow, no one's going to give us money. So that opportunity, that evidence, that impact, along with everything else that we've pulled our socks up over, it's just one example of how we are improving as an organization. But the other thing is, we now have a referral process which is an evolution from where it was. And through the work of the clinical team, through the work of the referral team that we have, we're now able to sign people on to and refer people on to partner organizations. We're now able to not, what's the right way of saying this, to never say no to somebody. It might not be us that treats them, but it might be somebody else. And that's a massive step forward for us. You know, when I arrived, everyone said, we never get any referrals from anywhere. Well, actually, let's take the bull by the horns and let's create those pathways. And we have those pathways now. So that's making a huge difference to us. God, I could go on forever about that. Um, one of the other things that we've introduced is not having any blame in the organization. I think it's something that th I learned from the, the therapists is, you know, we don't blame people for the situation that they're in. And that transpires across the rest of our organization as well. So people are allowed to, to make mistakes. People are allowed to cock up, for want of a better phrase. And that's fine, because it's all about learning. It's all about adapting and developing and understanding what works and what doesn't work. Because that's exactly what we do with our therapeutic models as well. So we apply that across our organization. So I'm really proud of how we've come over the next 18 months. Bloody scared about the next 18 months, if I'm honest because we've got so much to do, um, but it's a, a nice scared. Um, I came off a call last night with our funder, um, Gamble Aware, and one of the things he said, can we have a risk register of your growth plans? Because we're a bit scared as well. Said, Don't worry about it, I've got an excellent team. I'll just give it all to Alex and he'll sort it all out for us. So <laughs> poor old Alex sitting there as our uh, head of operational delivery, he's got a lot of work to do over the next 18 months, but he's not on his own because we're a team. And that's what this room's all about, is the team that we've, we've built around us. Um, I can't not say anything about COVID, really, because it's been massive this year. And it's going to carry on having an impact on not just us, but all organisations. But the agility of the organisation to deal with COVID over the last 18 months has been phenomenal. I'm going to specifically pull out Dave and Mandy on this their abilities to cope, change and flex their teams, their, their delivery teams during these times of crisis is phenomenal. And we had an incident where the member of staff unfortunately falling down with COVID, falling down is not the right word, but you know what I mean, um, a couple of weeks back. And it was, a, I'm, I'm gonna say it was a breeze from where I was sitting sure it wasn't in the services, but the fact that the team were able to flex and change and be agile during that period and adapt just shows who we are as an organization as well. So I'm proud of that agility within our organization. Um, so what about our 50th year then? We've been wanting to do a celebration all year long and actually our 50th is gonna carry on into next year because how can you plan for anything this year? We're bloody lucky to get this one going, to be honest. It nearly got cancelled a couple of times. Thankful that we didn't. Um, but this year is all about securing our future. So some of the things that we're doing is buying our properties. So last year we bought our property in Dudley. Um, Chloe, can you pass me some water? Before I dive apart, thank you. So we've bought our property in Dudley. This year, we've bought two new properties in Wolverhampton. Um, a 11 bed and a nine bed property to treat more people. So we've got a new team, or the, uh, the glamorous girls sitting at the front here, as I called them this morning. I shouldn't do that, to be honest, sorry, apologies. <laughs> but nonetheless, we are growing through property acquisition. We're gonna do the same thing in Beckenham as well. We're buying that property. But why, you say? Well, it's about security. It's about ensuring that no one can pull the rug from under our feet. 
And having that security in our buildings ensures that we're there for another 50 years. Yeah, they'll need a lick of paint. Yes, they'll need a bit of polishing around the edges, but we are here to stay. And that's what it's all about. Um, I'm sure Paul would say something about legacy and doing all that type of stuff. So when you get your packs and your books, please do read book, Paul's book. Um, Paul has spent a huge amount of time gathering the information, gathering the evidence, gathering lots of stuff from all over the place to pull together the book um, on Gordon Moody's history. So do you mind standing up, Paul? <laughs> Paul Bellringer. I have to say, personally, Paul's been a great supporter of mine over the past 18 months. So thank you, Paul, for the support you've given me. But thank you for bearing with us and producing the book, because it has been a lot of hard work for him. And he pulls this together. So don't just let it gather dust on there. Read the history of the organisation, because it's a really interesting one. Um, it shows how we've got here today. Um, and I'm not going to talk about the rest of the speakers, because they'll I'll spoil it. Um, we've rebranded as well in our 50th year. So we've moved on from the purple to the orange and everything else that comes with it. So you'll see all around different illustrations and colours and everything. That's our new brand. Um, with that, we also developed a website, redeveloped our website, should I say. Um, that wasn't easy. But the impact of that is what? What's the impact of that, Rob? I'll pick on you. The people applying to us, 160 percent increase in a quarter. It's just, it's just opened the taps for people out there that need help. So our new brand and our new digital presence is meaning that we're getting 10, 15 applications a week when last year, last year we were getting 10 or 15 applications a month. That's the difference that we're making and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got a lot of work to do on marketing campaigns, for example, poor old Chloe, um, but a long way to go. Um, so this is about building on our legacy, and you'll hear all about our legacy in a bit. Um, so I won't go into any more of that. And finally, the future, given that this is all about the past, the present, and the future. What does our future look like? Well, working with the trustees at the moment on the strategy for the next three, five, and 10 years, it's quite interesting that our vision and purpose rings true from what um, Adam's going to say about why Gordon Moody set this organisation up. And it hasn't differed that much as we've grown. It still stands true. Um, one of the most important things about our future is creating a demand-led organisation. And what do I mean by that? An organisation where people know who we are, people know where they are, we are, and people know how to access us. So all the stuff we've done with the brand, with the digital, with the teams, with the services allows more people to grab us and come and reach us and it's on my crease it's all looking positive to be honest i'm really loving it i took this on as a six month interim role <laughs> back in february of last year six well four weeks before covid hit which we thought was going to be for a six week period and i thought okay six months I can cope with this, it's quite nice. I'm enjoying the team. And I'm now talking about staying forever, so there you go. I think that just shows, from my point of view, how much I love working in this organisation because of the difference that we make.